polishing a black car. A black Cadillac. Hey, I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. And this is DIY Detail. <laughs> Today we're gonna to be giving this beautiful Cadillac a little more beauty, a little more luster, some gloss, and a ceramic coating. One thing that folks might wonder is, do I need to polish paint differently if the color is black? And the answer is no. We're polishing clear coat. We're actually not polishing paint. So the clear coat on this black car is the same as the clear coat on a white car. It's the same as the clear coat on a silver car. And yet, it seems like black shows everything, right? It gets dirty faster, it shows the scratches. What advice would you have for folks, just a mentality, as they approach polishing black paint? Keep it simple, keep your pad as flat as possible, and keep the speeds down. You don't wanna be creating heat, you don't wanna be swelling that paint, because if you swell the paint, you're creating what is, uh, could be termed as a Botox effect. So you're swelling the paint, it looks great, and then when the solvents evaporate out of it and it cools down, and that can take a couple weeks, it's not a, an immediate thing, the temperature, yes, goes down. But that swelling effect that you can get from solvents and oils goes away after time. So the best indication of that is you drive by your dealership. They put a beautiful black Cadillac up on the, the little stand there to show off to everyone, and it looks great when they put it out there. Then two or three weeks later, you drive by, the car hasn't moved. It's only been rained on, but now you see buffer trails on it. Buffer trails are indicators that they used a rotary and they used the rotary wrong. Rotary doesn't cause buffer trails. The person using the rotary causes buffer trails. So let's get polishing. Now we've got two different polishers, actually three. Nick's got the uh, Milwaukee there. It's a five inch, 15 millimeter stroke polisher. And I've got a little random orbit sander. They both do the same job. Now this has an eight millimeter orbit that has a 20 or a 15, 15, 15 millimeter orbit. But in reality, we're pretty much doing the same thing. The key to this is the pads and the gold standard polish. So the pad that we have here is a waffle pad. It keeps the surface nice and cool. It cuts well and it finishes beautifully. And then with the gold standard polish, well, we've got a long working time. It's easy to use. We're not gonna be filling. We don't have to worry about moldings. We don't have to worry about trim. Not that there is any on this, but uh, we don't have to worry about any of that. It's safe. We don't need to tape off the vehicle. And, and it's a sprayable polish, which is very unique. Yep. Some folks may not have used before. Right, so a sprayable polish, quite easy. While it's spinning down, you literally, one spray. What that does is now over the pad, we've got thousands of little drops of polish instead of, well, let's put three pea size drops. It's spreading it evenly. We don't need to use a pad prep spray. We don't need to prime the pad. We're not wasting product. So you use a lot less polish doing it this way. I'm ready. Off we go. Now, you always wanna start ideally with a damp pad and not damp with the product, but actually damp with rinseless wash. So I'm gonna put my pad in the rinseless wash, squeeze out the excess liquid, and then just inside the bucket, not touching the liquid. And now I just have a lightly dampened pad. I came with the rinseless wash in a spray bottle. Yeah, exactly. I'm a little damp, I'm a little prepped, I'm ready to go. We have polish on the pad. You start at the front, I'll start at the back. We'll work our way to the center. Okay. Now the DIY gold standard polish wipes off with ease, simplicity. But if you want to, and you want to minimize your risks even more of marring or scratching the paint, use a rinseless dampened towel 
to do the first wipe and then dry it off. So let me go get a towel, we'll put it in the rinseless and I'll show you what I mean. So I don't want a wet towel, I just want a damp towel. And we're gonna use this as the first pass to wipe off the majority of the polish. And then a dry towel to dry it off. Now this vehicle for the most part has been repainted and with a repainted vehicle, you know, we wanna be a little more cautious. We can read the paint thickness, but we don't know how much of that is the new paint, the old paint underneath that they sand it all off. So we have to be very careful as to how in depth we go. What we're looking for is gloss and clean paint because the ceramic coating adheres to clean paint. It doesn't need to be perfect paint. Uh, you notice I went over this section a little more. There's a deeper scratch here. I rounded over the scratch, released the appearance of the scratch, and we move on to the next section. Now, one thing that you always want to be careful of is your pad. You don't want to be putting clean polish on a dirty pad. It slows down the cut of your pad and also can lead to excessive micro marring, things like that. So always keep your pad clean and ready to go. We didn't decontaminate this car before polishing. We just uh, did the no touch method. Oh, that's right. Look at this video up here. We'll get back to polishing now. Now one question we get asked, do you need a three inch polisher? The answer is no. Do you want a three inch polisher? That answer is, Yes, you want a three inch polisher, totally not necessary. For instance, I'm doing this, uh, this pillar here, right? The A pillar. But could I do it with the five inch? Absolutely, because we don't have a dusting polish. It doesn't stain trim. So you could absolutely run all the way down here. More than anything, I just want to play around with the, the new Rupes cordless, but it is not necessary. Right. Unless you're doing show cars at the really high level, then you're gonna want all the fancy tools and toys and tricks and all that, but we're talking about, Have can I fun. teach my dad to polish his own car? Right. And absolutely, this method, absolutely yes. Yes, we have one of our viewers that leaves a lot of comments and we thank him for it. He details with his grandfather and they learn from each other and they have fun doing this together. So this is something you can have fun at home doing as well with your kids, your grandkids, or your grandfather or your father, or your mother for that matter. Now, you'll notice we polish the glass. Well, we want to polish the glass just to make it easier. We clean better, does a better job. And because there was some repainting done, I actually got black on my pad. You I don't mean know like you can this. see it here. Oh, you can see it on mine. Yeah, we both have black on our pads here. I just polished the window. So that's overspray on the, on the window. It's a great reason to polish it, get it out of there. Right, and it's gonna make them so much easier to clean. Well, Nick, it's looking good. I love the gold standard polish. I'm gonna say it again. You can work this so long, and right when it gets super translucent is where it's about time to stop, and that is when it is absolutely the easiest to wipe off, which exactly. is great because some polishes, it's like wiping off concrete if you spend too long with them. Exactly. We spent a lot of time developing this polish, and you know people were patient waiting for it too, so thank you on that. But we got it dialed in the way we want it, and hopefully the way you want it. If you want to learn more about the Gold Standard Polish, there's a podcast. It's right here. Go check it out.